All right, so you want to make something like this street legal. How do you do it? Uh, yeah, this is going to be a quick video showing how to take your, I don't know, whatever motorcycle, as long as you have a title. I'm not going to go over that because that changes from state to state. But uh, yeah, this is going to take my supermoto, just a regular dirt bike. I have an off-road title for it. And I'm going to show you how to make it street legal. So, it's going to be a few, few things you need. Uh, start off the front of the bike and working back. Need some sort of headlight. High and low vis. Um, I mean high and low vis. Uh, high and low beams. Um, this is a Polo Sport one. I think I got it for like 55 bucks. All the mounting stuff that goes with it. Um, <laughs> you'll need a horn. Um, this is like an electric bicycle horn. It's like $7 on Amazon. Um, I'm just using this just to make it legal and I'm probably going to take it off. I won't ever use a horn. Um, what is this? Come on. You will need a switch to turn on your headlight. It needs to be, if you're going to be legit, a uh, three position switch. So off, um, normal, and then high beams. You're supposed to technically have an indicator that shows when your high beams are on, but no one will look at that, so don't worry. Uh, you'll need a mirror. Hey, good looking. Let's cook it. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, you, if um, it depends on what state you're in. I'm um, in Texas. You're supposed to have blinkers, but you don't have to have them here. You can say that you're just going to use uh, hand signals, so I'm not putting blinkers on this bike. You will need... I'm not sure if you actually have to have a speedometer or not, but it's a good idea. And uh, I splooged on this one a little bit. This is the Voyager. I'll probably do a review of this later because I couldn't really find too many reviews, but this thing looks pretty cool. And uh, I think I got it for $240 on Amazon. Um, it's got like GPS and everything in it too, and along with all the other trail tech normal stuffs of monitoring all the shit on your bike. So get one of those. This is probably the main piece right here. It's going to be stator and flywheel and wiring oh don't lose those um what is this oh this is a battery bag yeah it came with some it's a trail tech kit it came with like a small battery i thought it was gonna be a full-size one but i guess this will work my bike doesn't even have electric start so i really don't even care about a battery but i guess this will hold some charge so i can have my lights on while the bike's not running uh, a regulator rectifier changes AC to DC and regulates how much power is actually going into the battery. Uh, wiring harness. Um, you don't have to get a bigger flywheel, but this is a 70 watt kit that I got. I actually found this on Amazon as well. Um, if you look at the Trail Tech website, you can get the 40 watt kit that doesn't come with this flywheel. Um, but uh, it's like one. 60 or 80 years, I don't know. And then the 70 watt kit on Trail Tech is like 260. But on Amazon, I found the 70 watt kit. I might, I'll probably change these numbers, they're probably wrong. But I found basically the 70 watt kit with this flywheel on Amazon for the same price as the 40 watt one on Trail Tech. So I was like, why wouldn't I buy the better one? So you need that. What's that? Uh, this is probably a stator. But, um,. Yeah, so stator. Uh, come on. It's not candy, don't eat that. Just to make shit smoke it. Whatever, you know what a stator looks like. Um, and you also probably, if you do go with this flywheel, you have to have some special puller tool that kind of goes on there and it wrenches it off somehow. So you'll need that, so don't forget that. And probably pick up a gasket too, just in case. Um, let's see, what else will you need? You will need a uh, brake light. This one uh, is just a universal whatever. Um, I think I have for like 12 bucks, something like that. Just LEDs. Um, it's also got a little license plate LEDs, so that's kind of a cool bonus little feature, but whatever. And then you will need some way to turn on the brake light. So these are pressure switches. Um, the reason I have two is not because I'm doing a front and back, it is because I'm dumb and I ordered the wrong one. So there's two different kinds of brakes. Um, you have Brembo, or brands, not kinds really. You have Brembo and you have Nissan. Yeah, this one's Brembo, this one's Nissan. And they have different thread pitches. If you can see, 
totally different. Like this one's like a by one or something, and this one's by like 1.5, like fine threads or something. Anyway, I when I ordered this, I wasn't near the bike, and I guessed that it had Brembo, and it doesn't. Good way to find out is go look at your bike, not like me and just order parts. But it'll say like right here or on the rear brake as well. But um, the CRF has this in brakes. I thought I had Brembo, but whatever. I got those, so that's gonna be ordered now. And so then you just gotta mount everything up and put it on. Um, I'll go through a little bit of that, a little bit of the install process, but if you're looking around my garage and you've been following my videos, you may notice there's only one bike in here. The KTM is gone. Some guy came and picked it up, so happy about that. So now I have money to get this thing going in street legal but so yeah let's get this thing going so start the bike let it warm up yeah drain whatever bolt that catches all your oil and uh we're gonna take this cover off so oh, this rx stock exhaust sounds really good all right we're warming up a little brat brat. Don't mind the leaks, I'm gonna fix that. Water pump's leaking a little bit. And then I bet in the stator cover over here, somewhere down here, I bet the gas gets torn, or this guy. So. remove any other shit that is in the way. Um, I took the gas tank off and all the, the fenders just so I could, um, number one, inspect the air filter and everything else. Um, two, I think if I know my hour meter is not working, it just shows zero, no matter what. Um, uh, but yeah, you'll need to gain access to wherever that your stator wires go to. So for me, runs up this guy right here, plugs in up here. So basically, I just need to be able to take that off and get to it really easy. So that's why I took that off. This is all bike dependent, so really not going to show you how exactly to do it. All right, remove all your stator cover bolts, those guys. And you might have to move the shifter, but I'm gonna try to get away with not doing it on this one. There's probably gonna be oil that's dumping around. It's gonna be a little bit hard to pull off too because there's a magnet that it's kind of stuck to. There we go. Yeah, next step, pull that off. All right, I just wanted to show you the, um, the wiring harness is essential here. <laughs> Fucking dog, it's my, it's my basset hound. Uh, but yeah, I just wanna show you the wiring harness here really quick. Um, so I guess starting with everything. Um, this is the new stator. This is the uh, pulse generator, what sends the spark plug stuff. This is what sends stuff everywhere else. Um, get both new ones there. You will connect the bullet connectors on yellow to yellow. This is really easy to hard. It's hard to mess this up if uh, unless you're colorblind or something. These two will connect into your stock wiring harness. They should be the same colors um, if you ordered the bike specific kit. Um, then you're going to connect in the only f big four pin connector to the regulator. Um, this one is an extra that I believe the kit says gives 12 volt DC so you could um, wire up um, anything else that you would want to use, maybe like some accessory lighting or uh, one of those little uh, USB power cables or I don't know, whatever the hell you want. Um, and then you're going to use these bullet connectors that have these double ones that go into the battery. Basically you can just mount your battery just about anywhere. I'm going to mount it right underneath here, probably use this little bar for support. They want you to mount the regulator up here, um, they want you to drill holes in the frame and use some self-tapping screws. Um, I'm not going to do that right now just because I want to hook everything up and test it and make sure it works and then I'll go back and uh, mount it. 100%. You'll uh, you'll mount your stator back into the the, uh, the case. Um, I'm just gonna reuse the 
the Phillips head bolts, even though I really don't like those, but put thread locker on them and get them get them fairly tight turns in there. Also put thread locker on these bolts so they stay. Obviously this little uh, grommet piece goes down in there when you're ready to install. Um, I took the gasket off because it was already ripped anyway, so uh, clean this up with a razor blade. Yeah, I'll get mine a little bit better. Um, clean it up, grab a new gasket, throw that on. Um, yeah, run your wires in <laughs> stock location. Um, if not, just be smart about it. Just know where, where everything goes and things that move and things that get hot. Keep them away. Use zip ties. I'm going to tie these up to these carb lines here. Um, once I pull out the slack, temporarily mounted my voltage regulator here um, yeah just zip ties so don't bag on that too much but like I said I just want to put, get this put together it's like it will not move um, but I just want to get this together and test everything out and then ride it around make sure everything's okay then I will properly mount these uh, connect these stock switches from the where were they from from the stator into the stock harness or just they just clip in just normal um, Obviously that's the four pin clip, it goes stator to regulator. This is the extras, which I think I'm going to run my lights off of basically. Uh, the red and yellow wire. Um, run the power to the battery. You should have the battery mounted the same way, just really temporary, just trying it out. Wire that up, red, red, black, black, easy. Right underneath the frame so it won't hit the seat. Mine's got this nifty little hole and cover and whatnot. Let's mount that up. Whatever tail light you decide to go with. Mine's gonna mount pretty cool. I'm gonna have to get some sort of L-shaped brackets because see this is straight and uh, it's gonna sit up in there just like that. Fits really nicely actually. Looks pretty cool. Um, but I'll get some sort of L-shaped bracket to go from between here up to here. Probably just drill a hole or something. Use some nice looking bolts so it doesn't look terrible. Another uh, late night here, but I finished up the uh, the stator and battery. I kind of moved that a little bit. Um, and the regulator I've moved up here now because it was hitting the tank when it was down there. It wasn't able to mount, so battery's moved, regulator's moved. Um, I've started to wire up the, uh, the Trail Tech Voyager here. Um, really stinks. They didn't send a fat bar mount, so I have to kind of get to it right now for this while I'm testing. They only sent me like a really skinny, this one, and somewhere in between, so um, if you're looking at getting one, you have to have some sort of other mounting thing, or go get it like this one is, and have a big zip tie on it. Um, actually, the Voyager's completely hooked up, because the only thing I'm not going to use is the wheel speed sensor, because this actually has a GPS uh, speed, which will be accurate enough. So um, that one's not going to be used, but everything else is hooked up. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I've got power; it's hooked up, so it should run all the time um, once you turn it on. Um, got the temperature uh, sensor there in line with the coolant. It's easy; you just cut the hose and stick it in there. Um, the spark plug, you just wrap it around the, the wire so it picks up the ignition and then you can count hours on this thing. Alright, so I got the bike done. <laughs> this is a, a couple days later, really late night, working on it. i um, going to go ride with the guys in the morning, so I really wanted to finish this. But uh, yeah, I've got it all wired up and headlight tail light all worked mounted and everything so um i'm really not going to tear the bike down to show you sorry for that uh this was kind of a how-to video but not really um i'll put up my wiring diagram actually um so that'll help you out a lot i know nothing about wiring and i barely got this done and i can solder and that's about it um help i have my dad help me out with drawing the wiring harness so uh, yeah, you'll see that, and then maybe you can kind of copy it if if you have any, if you have the same bike and it's putting the same stuff on, but yeah, I'll just do a quick overview here. It's got my switch mounted, I got the new kill switch, so that got rid of that ugly one, and got uh, 
low beams, high beams, doesn't really work right now. I've killed the battery because I've been testing this so much. That's so why I need to drive it around a lot more. I just did a quick ride just to make sure everything worked. Um, but yeah, it's got low, high beams. Um, I don't have a horn on it, whatever, I'll mount that later. Um, got my Voyager all wired up, reads temperatures and everything. Got my wired in the coolant line. Um, Oh yeah, the uh, the tail light I got tucked up real nice up under there. It's pretty cool. See the little light? Bing, 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 bing. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, runs off of the uh, the switch on the front brake. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. Doesn't seem like much when I look at the bike now, but it was a lot of work. Um, yeah. Anyway, just thought I'd give you an update. The uh, next video will hopefully be me tearing it up. So, till next time. Peace.